Hello everyone and welcome back to my art channel. So today I'm going to discuss uh, a principle in composition in designing a good artwork uh, that's called asymmetrical balance. And it's a pretty simple concept, but it can go a long way into making your compositions look better. And so basically uh, what it is, is in order to talk about asymmetrical balance, first I'll explain um, you know, everyone probably intuitively knows what symmetrical balance is. And that's if, like, let's say you had a teeter-totter or a seesaw or whatever you want to call it. If you have two more or less equal masses on that seesaw, it's going to be balanced. But this is also you know, symmetrical, essentially. And while this is, of course, balance, it's very static and not that visually interesting. Um, so in art, you know, an example of, of this visually on, in a painting, you know, if you had like, let's say a landscape, you know, if you had two trees like this, you know, in a landscape and they were more or less the same and then you had a road right in the center going off into the distance you know that's sort of the landscape equivalent of this um, and unless you're deliberately breaking the rules which you can do you know a painting like this done inadvertently or you know the, the person comes up with that composition not meaning to do it um, this is going to be very static and not very visually interesting. So the thing to look for in your compositions is what you call, what we call asymmetrical balance. And so it's still balanced, but it's asymmetrical. So it's both visually balanced, but also pleasing and interesting because, and an example of asymmetrical balance, you know, on your teeter-totter, um, would be as if you had a large mass here, closer to the center, you would balance that by putting the smaller thing out near the edge, like that. So now it's balanced, but it's asymmetrical. And this is much more interesting to the eye in artwork and design than the other one was. So an example of this, in a painting, like let's say we were doing that same landscape, was if you had a tree in here that was closer, and then another small one over here, and maybe some mountains in the distance, you know. Another tree here. You know, so, so this, you know, visually, these trees here, this large mass here is balancing the smaller one over here that's further away, you know, from the imaginary center, which is right there. So this kind of a composition in landscapes and in still life as well is going to be far more visually interesting than this one. So and an example of this, like in a landscape, or I'm sorry, in a still life would be if you had a, you know, let's say you had a large uh, vase or something right here you know, with flowers in it. Yeah. You know, in, in this part of the, you know, then you want to balance it with something over here that's further away, you know, so you could have some fruit over here and maybe some leaves or little debris so but this is you know because this is large here this 
smaller one further from the center is going to balance it out. You know, and, and remember too that you also use you know shadows as well as part of your composition. You know, so so this would be an example of asymmetrical balance in a still life. So, and again, this is going to be much more interesting, let's say, than just taking this vase of flowers and sticking it square in the center, uh, which is very static looking. So that's an example of what asymmetrical balance is in painting and art. So, so if you try to use that in your compositions, I think it will uh, probably help you because uh, it makes art more visually interesting. So I hope that this concept was clear to you and that this video helped you. And I thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time.